Welcome back friends. It is a new year and we finally have a new video. It's been a while since I've posted. This video is going to be the worst books that I've read in 2023. I'm going to start off with all the books that I gave two stars. First book that I gave two stars is Disorientation written by, and I'm going to mess up the name, Elaine Hsu Chu. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. I'm really sorry if I got that wrong. This is a book that I read as a part of Sarah Without an H's Secret Santa Readathon. I'm a proud carriage carry member of Sarah's Patreon and I highly recommend everyone go check that out. But back to the book. This book is about a graduate student who's trying to write their dissertation. I think that's what it's pronounced. I don't know. I didn't go to graduate school. I only went to undergrad. She is, I believe, like an Asian American. I don't know. I want to say Chinese American, but that could actually be wrong. And they're trying to write a dissertation about this one Chinese poet. The thing about this book is that it's supposed to be satire and I don't understand satire. This book dives into the political nest of being an Asian American and being an Asian American regarding sexism, racism, but the thing about this book is that it's trying to make some very fair points about the Asian American experience, but it does it so heavy-handed that I just couldn't get into the book like it, it read like a twitter thread I understand this is supposed to be satire and there are moments in the book where like you have your main character and we have another character like sitting in a courtroom like discussing certain like pull points about like let's say for example Asian uh, racism in America but it's just so heavy-handed it felt like the book was beating you over the head with all of these very fair points and the other thing about this book is that the main character, and I don't remember what her name is, but she's just so unlikable. Like, she started being very unlikable. And then she delved into kind of just like this paranoia about her, her life, her boyfriend, her, the work that she's do been doing. She's like, is it, is it all worth it? Whatever. And I, I just didn't like this book. This book is only getting two stars because it was trying to make some very fair political points about being an Asian American, but I think that it just wasn't done well and I didn't really get anything out of this book. The next book is Sea of Room by Miss Pam Godwin and I picked up this book fully knowing that it's a dark romance. So what we have here is we have our main character, I think her name is Bennett, who is, let's just say it's Victorian England or Yule Time England because we're dealing with like a pirate story here and it opens up with um, Miss Bennett being, you know, a child in her teenage years and we realize that she has a really good relationship with her father and then something happens to her father and um, Miss Bennett goes on to become a pirate, a well-renowned female pirate. But the thing about this book, I was not buying at all her being kind of this badass pirate. The other thing about this book is that it is dark romance so it, and it is a love triangle so she has her husband that she met who's his name is Priest and then she meets another guy whose name I can't remember. What I realized about this book is that it's there the main characters are always on a boat or some kind of boat. They're, they're on many different boats like Miss Bennett is traveling across a ton of boats like I think she was probably on like four or five boats by the time the story ended and then they just like never or hardly ever got off the boat and I personally I was liking this book up until the 60% and at the 60% mark this thing happened where it was supposed to be like a reveal when that reveal happened it, it might as well have thrown the book out the window because I did not like that reveal at all I thought it undid a lot of the work that this book was trying to do or the you know that relationship building between Bennett Priest and that third guy that I can't remember whose name I would have preferred and this is the way that I want the story to end I would have preferred if Priest had gotten killed off and that Bennett had ended up with the other man but this thing happened where I was just like why would you do that? You just ruined the story. And also the other thing about this book is that it's just porn. It's straight up porn. It's straight up erotica. Like you think that a sex scene ends, then let it like literally five pages later, a, another sex scene starts. This book ended up being a two star for me because I was live laugh loving up until the 60% mark of the book. And like I said, the reveal that happened, it just might as well have chucked the entire book out the window. The next book is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I feel like this is a book that has two camps. Either you love it or you hate it. And I am in the hate camp because this book spans 300 years of Addie's life. And just as like a background here, Addie is immortal, however, 
she makes a deal with the devil or a demon that says that nobody can remember her. Like once she walks away from them, they won't remember meeting her. And so this book spans 300 years and a whole lot of nothing happened in 300 years. Uh, at the 50% mark of the book, I was starting to get bored. And then this kind of twist happened that I was like, oh, the story is going to pick up the pace. We're going to get some plot. And it just didn't materialize. This is a book that's purely vibes. There is no plot to this book. And I'm the type of reader where I need a plot or else I will not be entertained. Therefore, this book got two stars. I mean, the writing was really good. And it is V. Schwab. The fact that there is no plot put it to two stars. Next book is Clockwork Angel by Miss Cassandra Clare and this one I totally inflicted upon myself. It's two stars because once again this is another book where nothing happens and we are living in the Shadowhunter world which I didn't really like the Shadowhunters to begin with. I, this book I picked up to try to give Cassandra Clare a second chance but I think that I'm no longer in my YA era. Like I said this, a whole lot of nothing happens in this book but there was a kind of a re reveal towards the end of the book that kind of had me entertained. So it wasn't a complete one star. The next book is Born Darkly, whose author's name I can't remember right now. This book got a two stars because it is another dark romance book that I read. This book is based on this psychologist who treats patients who end up in jail, like really big, like criminal offenders. And so she's treating this one patient who is kind of like this Dexter type guy. They end up falling in love. Now I like me a good serial killer story. However, this one I did not like because I felt like the abuse between the serial killer and then our therapist, I just felt like there was just like so much abuse that like sometimes a dark romance, like the sex, you could kind of get into it. But this one, I just felt like he was torturing her. And there were at points in the book where she was like, no, I don't want this to happen. I don't want to do this. I feel like she was trying to say no. He was not listening to the no. Also, the dark romance in this book just did not work for me. So sorry to bore darkly, but it got two stars for me. The next book is Call Me Maybe by Miss Cara Bastione. I think that's how you say her name. And this one is an Audible exclusive. So this is a contemporary romance where we have a male and a female whose name I can't remember. And the guy works for this one tech company, like think Squarespace. And then the girl is a user of Squarespace and she ends up having some like, technological issues with her website and she needs, she like calls customer service and then she gets the guy on the phone and then through conversations they end up falling in love. Now this is a book that I read at the very, very beginning of 2023. And I remember not liking it because the narrators just kind of grated on my nerves. Like, I like it when a book has a, a male narrator for the guy and then a female narrator for the girl. But the girl narrator was doing a really bad job. Like, listening to her was kind of great into the ears. But also, it was a contemporary romance where there was no spiciness. They, I feel like it was very insta-lovey. There was kind of like a reveal towards the end of the book that I saw coming a mile away. You know, it wasn't a horrible time, but it wasn't a good book. And therefore, why it got two stars. Now, the next two-star book is probably going to get me some haterade. And it is Nevermore the Trials of Morgan Crow. This is a case of where it's me not you because I know a lot of people who love this book. However, I think the middle gradeness of it all made me not like the book because it was giving me a lot of YA and I know that people say that this book kind of gives them the feeling of you know, Harry Potter when they read that the fourth time but I was not getting that. This book is based on Morgan Crow who is a cursed child who at their I think I want to say 11th or maybe 13th birthday she is destined to die because she's a cursed child so on her 13th birthday she's kind of given the opportunity to go outside of her world and go to a place where like she won't die and so she's thinking I don't want to die let me go there and she has to go through these trials to join the wonder society which is like I as I understand it like a group of like magician type characters or people or group or whatever I think the middle greatness of it all maybe not like this book I wouldn't say that it's terrible I, I would recommend it for people who like middle grade but it was just not for me now let's get into my one star books the absolute worst of the worst books that I read in 2023 we're gonna start off with a banger here and the first book that I read is Ghost Eaters I think it's called by Clay McLeod Chapman this is another book that I read for Sarah Without an H's Secret Santa Readathon this book how can I describe I listen to this purely on audio and the premise of it is that we have a female main character whose best friend surprisingly I can't remember his name because that name was mentioned so many times 
in the book, he uh, he's a drug addict and he ends up passing away and she is just devastated but she learns that he dies because he was taking this drug that allowed him to see ghosts and so she in her desperation wants to see her friend again that she ends up taking the drugs and then she sees ghosts everywhere and I did not like this book because the audio was done so terribly. The narrator who did that should never narrate an audiobook ever again. I just went and looked up the review I gave this on Goodreads and I'm just going to read it out loud to you guys because this pretty much sums up my feeling. This book is quite possibly one of the worst things I've ever read. Period. The premise sounded so promising but the execution was poorly done. Every single character in this book was unlikable. My hatred for this book started in the first 50 pages where... Silas, that's his, that's the name, and Aaron had sex over somebody's grave. I was disgusted. I was like, why would you do that? It gave me the ick and it just got worse from there. I could not for the life of me understand what Aaron kept going back to Silas when the book just gave us nothing about how their relationship develops over time. Silas is a trash man and Aaron is a trash person. I'm the kind of person when I have a toxic person in my life and I realize that person is toxic, I would cut that cord so quickly. This book also had one of my biggest writing pet peeves. I listened to it in audiobook and then I had the physical copy or like the Kindle version of it as well. But the biggest writing pet peeves that I have is like when an author is trying to explain like an internal like you know, dialogue, but they put it in italics. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. It just shows that the writer doesn't know how to write internal dialogue well, that they just re like resort to using italics to like make an exclamation or try to make a point. Miss Rebecca Yaris is also guilty of doing this, which is why whenever I see this in a book, that book is not getting more than like two stars. What made this book so frustrating, it was just so cyclical in the thinking because Aaron was like, I need to see Silas again. I need to see Silas again. And it was just a bunch of like drug addicts that were trying to get their hit that I was just like, I, I, I literally don't care. I could not empathize with a single one of these characters because they were just all unlikable. The Aaron's friends, I think it's Amaris and somebody else, let's just call him Ted, they were so unlikable that I just, I could not get into this book at all. And then the next book, oh, oh my god, the next book, Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Miss Ashley Winstead. Miss Ashley Winstead did me wrong because I went into this book thinking that I was gonna like it because she wrote one of my favorite books of this year, which is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. However, Midnight is the Darkest Hour just turned out to be Twilight fanfic with a drug plot involved. I could not sympathize for our main character, Ruth, and then the guy as well, whose name I can't remember, I couldn't sympathize for them either. Because Ruth, I get it. You are a church girly. You are sheltered. But at the same time, it's like, get a life. You need to disassociate with your parents. You need to get out of that town. And, and also, the ending of this book just left on, I don't want, like, a cliffhanger. Like, literally a cliffhanger. Where the book just stops. There is no ending. The book just stopped. The next book is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Miss Sarah J. Mass, and this one is also self-inflicted because I read this for my video where I tried to give authors a second chance, and I wish I hadn't given Miss Sarah J. Mass a second chance because this book is so bad. I feel like this one doesn't need like any explanation because everybody knows what the premise of this book was, but I think that Feyre is just a dumb illiterate bitch. The other guy, Tamlin, I, I know like at some point he turns out to be like a punk ass character. After this experience, I will not be picking up another Sarah J. Mass book again. Like, I'd rather roll over and die. Next book is episode 13 by Craig DeLui. This book is one that I listened to on audio, and I know that it's, it's done kind of like, is it epistolary style? But it had multiple narrators for the audiobook, but those narrators, in my opinion, were doing a good job. And then at like the halfway mark of the book, or maybe just a little bit later on, it turned into like cosmic horror, or there was just kind of this plot twist where it just like dumped everything that we, you know, learned about in the first half of the book that I just was like, what is this plot twist? Like, why is it happening? Can we please move on from this? This book is about this crew who work on this TV show and they're going to this haunted house or a supposedly haunted house to shoot an episode of their TV series and it kind of just like takes on from there but like I mentioned the plot twist in the book had me had me going what and I can't remember what happened towards the end because I remember I just kind of like gave up at the end I, I mean I did finish it but I could not remember what the ending was pretty much at all because I was just so disinterested after that twist happened. The next book is a bit controversial but it is 
Jay-Z Jones and the Six by Miss Taylor Jenkins Reads. And I did not look this book because I did not like Daisy or Billy. So we have Billy's band, The Six, and then we have Daisy, who joins the band later on. And it's basically kind of our, almost a retelling of the Fleetwood Mac drama within that band. So the reason why I didn't like this book is that it's heavy on the emotional cheating between Billy and Daisy. Billy has wife. Billy has kids. However, he thought it was okay to emotionally cheat on his wife. And then Daisy, I felt like, is just an absolutely selfish character. Number one, she she was, you know, attracted to Billy and she made that known and she helped him emotionally cheat on his wife. But then Daisy was also just like such a drug addict. I think that Billy and Daisy were pretty horrible characters even though the audiobook is so well done I just could not buy into these two because I did not like them as characters now the next book is the bromance book club the first book in that series this book is based on this man and wife he is a professional baseball player I think it is and she is a stay-at-home mom and they have two kids like two I want to say like two or three year old kids the whole selling point of this book is that the wife asked for, and I think her name is Thea, asked for a divorce because in their three-year marriage, she says that the husband, Gavin, was not able to satisfy her sexually and that she had been faking it for the whole time. And so Gavin is upset at this, and so he, 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 he does something that Thea asks her to do, but Thea later on we discovered that she was like, I didn't mean for you to do that, I was just a test to like test your loyalty for me or your love for me. I honestly think that the wife Thea should be a war criminal. This book had me rooting for the man in this situation. I wanted these two to get a divorce. The other thing that I didn't like about this book is the children. When there are children in a book, I almost immediately will not like that book because I don't like kids. I don't want kids. I never have wanted kids. I don't like being around kids. So the fact that there were two children in this book, it was a bad time. But the also the other thing about this book is like how are you married for someone for three years and never have been able to communicate your issues in the bedroom that just seems like unrealistic to me that I was just like no no I did not like it and now the last book which is literally no surprise to anyone if you've been watching my channel for any length of time is The Fourth Wing by Miss Rebecca Yaros. I hate this book with a burning passion. I think that it's poorly written. The world building is also quite terrible. I'm glad that people who were standing this book when it came out have reversed their opinions once Iron Flame came out and realized what a flaming hot garbage pile this book is. Because Fourth Wing had two of the most annoying characters I could think of, Violet and Zayden. I did not like them one bit. I did not like their relationship. I did not like their romance, their plot lines. I did not care. The dragons, the the story or the world building on the dragons is hanging on by a loose, like a thread, a very, very thin thread. I think that Miss Rebecca Yaris needs to take a world building class because there are so many plot holes in this book. I could just not comprehend how this book got published. And I did not read Iron Flame. However, I did hear some things about Iron Flame about how the world building came apart even more and just confused people even more and how the first half of that book needed to be edited down. I am seeing on the internet that there's a conspiracy theory saying that this book, both Iron Flame and Fourth Ring, were written by ChatGPT and Miss Rebecca Yaros just kind of filled in some areas and said, good, publish. I cannot for the life of me understand why anybody likes this book. It is poorly written. This is not a fantasy book. It is romanticy and it's very, very light on the fantasy part where it's barely even there. I don't care about these characters. I will never pick up another Rebecca Yarth book ever again. That is it. That is my worst books that I've read in 2023. I know that we had some controversial picks on this list and hopefully next year I will do better.